What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. We are so close to the NFL draft, and I am so excited to be drafting some of these rookies on my Dynasty Fantasy football teams. I'm just getting that itch, and I know you guys are probably getting the itch too, but today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reviewing Peter Schrager's mock draft that he just put out on NFL.com. He says he's been on the phones with NFL GMs and on the phones with NFL head coaches. And because of those conversations, this is the conclusion that he came to for the first round of the NFL draft. We're a week away. So without wasting any more time, why don't we just hop into today's video and let's start reviewing this mock draft. So with the number one pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, Peter Schrager has the Chicago Bears selecting Caleb Williams. This is no surprise. Coming off of a season here where he went for 3,633 passing yards, 30 touchdowns, five interceptions, a little bit of a down year from Caleb Williams. We know this is a guy who has been a 4,500 yard passer in the past. We know that the ceiling for Caleb Williams is incredibly high. I don't think that there is really many other situations that would be better than what Caleb Williams is going to be walking into as a rookie here in Chicago. We know that they've loaded up this offseason. DeAndre Swift being added to the backfield, Keenan Allen being added to this wide receiver room, Obviously, DJ Moore, Cole Komet, those guys still there as well. A pretty solid defense there in Chicago. Caleb Williams is going to be set up for success. And this is a player who is going to be the number one pick in your super flex drafts. If he's not, you are getting a hell of a value because he should be the number one pick in your super flex drafts. And I love everything about Caleb Williams. Very, very high on him. My quarterback one. And again, that's not really a hot take because he should be and he will be pretty much everybody's QB one in this class. Caleb Williams, number one overall to the Chicago Bears in this mock draft by Peter Schrager. So let's take it over to the second pick here in the NFL draft. And with the second pick, he has the Washington Commanders selecting Jaden Daniels out of LSU. And Jaden Daniels put together a master class type of season here in 2023 with the LSU Tigers. 3,800 passing yards, another 1,100 yards on the ground, 50 total touchdowns and four interceptions. It was a hell of a season to say the least for Jaden Daniels. Obviously he had some help from some first round wide receivers as well. We know the names, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas Jr. These are the guys that we're going to be drafting in first rounds of rookie drafts as well. But you send him here to the Washington Commanders, and I do like this fit for Jaden Daniels. I think Jaden Daniels actually profiles as the better fit for the Washington Commanders than Drake May currently does at the moment. And the reason why I feel that way is because Cliff Kingsbury is the offensive coordinator. We know that he has a history of working with quarterbacks like Jaden Daniels. Obviously, he was able to help Kyler Murray, a dual threat mobile type of quarterback in Arizona when he was spending some time there. I do like this fit for Jaden Daniels, and the weapons are going to be pretty decent as well. I mean, you get Terry McLaurin, you get Jahan Dotson, Austin Eckler, Zach Ertz, maybe that's not even worth mentioning, but you get all of these weapons there in Washington. The only issue that I see is they don't have the greatest of offensive lines, but I do think that Jaden Daniels, his mobility is going to be leaned on because of that. I just hope that they can fix that in the future, and maybe they can fix that a little bit in this draft because Jaden Daniels doesn't seem like he's incredible with handling pressure to me, but in Washington here at the second overall pick, it is still something that is going to be very good for your rookie drafts, and it's probably going to make Jaden Daniels the number three overall pick behind Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. So now that takes us to the third overall pick in this draft. We know the New England Patriots hold the pick, and with that selection, they are going to be selecting Drake May, quarterback out of North Carolina. Peter mentions in his write-up here in this mock draft that they have had a lot of opportunities opportunities to have some conversations about moving back and trading down in this NFL draft. He says they're going to stay put. They're going to stick there and pick their quarterback of the future. And I really do like Drake May as a prospect. I think if I was going to rate these quarterbacks as prospects, May would be ahead of Jaden Daniels for me in my personal rankings. Now with this landing spot, I think Jaden Daniels would probably pass Drake May because we know that the New England Patriots don't have a lot of weapons to throw to there in New England currently. Maybe they are going to address that in the draft later because it is a deeper wide receiver draft. Looking at what Drake May was able to do at UNC, he is kind of a dual threat guy as well. Now, obviously not to the extent of what Jaden Daniels has done, but looking at 2022, he had almost 700 rushing yards. And then in 2023, 449 rushing yards as well. Seven and nine touchdowns on the ground, respectively, in each of those seasons. Guy also has a cannon of an arm, 4,300 passing yards and 38 touchdowns in 2022, following that up with 3,624 
in 2023. Obviously a down year in 2023 for Drake May, but we also have to remember that they did lose a couple weapons like Josh Downs, who did go to the NFL after that 2022 season. But just getting back to where he is at here in New England, I think this is a very high upside type of prospect. We're going to have to hope that he is so good of a prospect that he's going to elevate the talent around him because right now it does lack in New England, but he is still probably going to be worthy of a top four, maybe even at worst, a top five pick in your rookie drafts, despite landing in New England here and still a guy that I'm very high on no matter what. And so Drake May goes to the New England Patriots here with the third overall pick. So now's where it gets interesting. In this mock draft, Peter Schrager has the number four overall pick being traded away from Arizona to not the Minnesota Vikings. It goes to the New York Giants and the New York Giants move up here at number four to select JJ McCarthy, quarterback out of Michigan. This is kind of crazy. They move up two spots here. They go ahead and they draft the quarterback in JJ McCarthy. And obviously there are question marks about Daniel Jones. This is a gamble. This is a risk by the New York Giants. And I like JJ McCarthy as a prospect. I actually think he has a higher ceiling than some people are giving him credit for. Now, with that being said, I do think that JJ McCarthy has to go into a certain type of system in the NFL to be successful. And he probably is going to have to need a little bit more help than some of the other prospects that we've talked about so far at the quarterback position. This trade, putting him here in New York, does not necessarily mean either of those things that I talked about. The weapons subpar at best. They may actually be some of the worst weapons in the NFL. And the scheme here isn't necessarily the scheme that I'm talking about either. I think he would do better in a Sean McVay kind of scheme, maybe even a Kyle Shanahan type of scheme as well. But this New York Giants fit is not necessarily that. You look at what he did in Michigan, 2,991 passing yards, 22 touchdowns, and four interceptions this year. He did have the third highest QBR amongst all college quarterbacks. This is a guy who wasn't asked to do a lot at the college level. Obviously been a winner his entire career so far, but this type of landing spot means that J.J. McCarthy will be asked to do a lot as the quarterback of the future for the New York Giants. I think it's an interesting landing spot. Probably the draft capital alone is going to push J.J. McCarthy into that 108 type of range for your rookie drafts in your super flex leagues, but this definitely feels like one of the biggest gambles and one of the riskier picks that the Giants and Dynasty Fantasy Football managers could be making later here in the next couple of weeks. Now let's keep it pushing. With the fifth overall pick in the NFL draft, Peter Schrager has the Los Angeles Chargers staying put. They select Marvin Harrison Jr., the number one wide receiver in this class. And we don't got to talk too much about what Marvin Harrison Jr. is capable of as a talent. We have seen him do it for many, many years at Ohio State. Yes, 67 receptions, 1,211 yards, and 14 touchdowns in 2023. Basically identical stats the previous season as well as a true sophomore. Marvin Harrison is a generational wide receiver talent, a guy who is as as good as it gets when you're looking at college prospects to come in and be immediate impact players in your NFL offense. And look, he gets to go to the Los Angeles Chargers, who has a glaring need at that wide receiver position. Obviously, they moved on from Mike Williams and Keenan Allen earlier this offseason leaving the room right now, Quinton Johnston and Joshua Palmer. Marvin Harrison would walk into almost 150 plus targets immediately, being passed to by one of the better quarterbacks in the National Football League in Justin Herbert. I think this is a match made in heaven. The ceiling is going to be as high as it can possibly get for a wide receiver like this, and this is going to be a player who is going to be talked about in that Justin Jefferson, in that Jamar Chase, in that CeeDee Lamb type of tier almost immediately as soon as he walks into those NFL doors. And like I mentioned earlier, Marvin Harrison will be the number two overall pick in those super flex leagues because he is just that damn good and that would further even cement that pick especially if he lands in Los Angeles with the Chargers. Now with the sixth overall pick keep in mind they traded back it is the Arizona Cardinals they are going to be selecting wide receiver Rome Odunze out of Washington with this selection and I love this Peter I gotta say it you outdid yourself with this one I think this would be a fantastic move for the Arizona Cardinals. And honestly, this would put Rome Odunze above Malik Neighbors in my wide receiver rankings. Right now, I think both of these prospects are fantastic. I love both of them. But this landing spot to go play as the number one wideout for Kyler Murray, a tough X physical type of wide receiver that is going to be able to run every route for the Cardinals. I love everything about it. Romo Dunze would get a bump in my book. And that is saying a lot because I already view him very highly. Coming out of Washington, 92 receptions, 1,640 yards, and 13 touchdowns during his 2023 season. He is an absolute baller. And you put him in this offense next to Trey McBride as well. That is going to do good things for both of these guys. Romo Dunze is going to have a big part of the offense, and Trey McBride is going to have somebody who's going to be able to come in and kind of let the defense come off of him as he works the middle of the field. I really don't know what else to say about it. 
This is just a fantastic pick, I think. And I would actually just really love this type of fit for your Dynasty Fantasy Football Leagues. And I think with this type of landing spot, there is potentially a conversation for us to have about Romo Dunze over a guy like Drake May. It's just going to depend on how you view that quarterback position. But I think Romo Dunze would cement himself as a top five pick if this were the landing spot. Now, moving on to our next fantasy relevant player here at the ninth overall pick. Peter Schrager has the Chicago Bears trading out of the pick with the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts come up and they select wide receiver Malik Neighbors out of LSU. And the details of this trade he has as Indianapolis is sending Chicago a future second round pick in order to move up six slots and pounce in on Neighbors. I think this is pretty interesting because you think of that Indianapolis Colts wide receiver room right now, Michael Pittman Jr., Josh Downs, Alec Pierce, they definitely could use another guy, especially opposite Michael Pittman Jr. I think Michael Pittman has earned the right to call himself the number one and the alpha in this offense. But this would mean that the Indianapolis Colts are loading up for their quarterback of the future in Anthony Richardson. And even though it's hard for me to imagine that Chicago would trade out of this pick with neighbors here on the board, it does spark an interesting conversation for your Dynasty Fantasy Football Leagues. Coming off of a 2023 season here where he went for 89 receptions, 1,569 yards and 14 touchdowns, obviously had a breakout year there for the LSU. Tigers because in 2022 he had a thousand yards for three touchdowns so let that sink in extra 500 yards and an extra 11 touchdowns in 2023 truly a breakout season for neighbors as a junior but knowing what we know about Romo Dunze going to the Arizona Cardinals and now Malik Neighbors going to the Indianapolis Colts I think it just further cements the fact that we would probably move Romo Odunze over neighbors in our rankings I'm interested to hear what you guys think about this type of landing spot in the comments below so let me know what you think about those two wide receivers specifically neighbors and Rome based on these landing spots. I want to hear it in the comments, so let's talk about it. But this is going to move Rome over neighbors for me in my rankings. But that is where he lands here, pick number nine to the Indianapolis Colts. Now coming in at pick 10, this is where the New York Jets are going to be selecting Brock Bowers tight end out of Georgia. And We've seen this penciled in enough, I think, at this point to talk very little about it. I've mentioned it on the past couple of episodes where Brock has got this landing spot, but coming off of a 2023 season where he went for 56 receptions, 714 yards, and six touchdowns, Brock is as good as it gets at the tight end position, and you put him in this offense, some people are scared about it because they say that Aaron Rodgers has not hit his tight end in the past. My only argument to that is he has never had a tight end like Brock Bowers. I think you put him alongside Garrett Wilson, and just how we talked about with Rome Odunze and Trey McDonald, Bride, you do get that same type of feel with a Garrett Wilson and a Brock Bowers. And in fact, it might even be better in New York with those guys. Obviously, the longevity of Aaron Rodgers is still a question mark because he is coming off of an Achilles and he is in his 40s at this point. But there really is no reason to overthink this. This is a special prospect. And especially in your tight end premium leagues, you're going to be wanting to draft a guy like this at the 107 type of range in those rookie drafts. Now, going to our next fantasy relevant player, that does take us all the way to pick 20, where the Pittsburgh Steelers are on the clock. And with the 20th pick, the Steelers do select Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver out of LSU. And Brian Thomas is coming off of a 2023 season where he had 68 receptions for 1,177 yards and 17 touchdowns. A huge touchdown number for Brian Thomas Jr. He was breaking records there at LSU as far as those touchdown numbers go. But you put him here in Pittsburgh, We've had some rumors about potentially Brandon Ayuk being a trade target for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Obviously, with this draft pick, you have to assume that those rumors would not happen, but it does seem like they were looking at a wide receiver. At least that's what Peter Schrager thinks in this mock draft. So they do get Brian Thomas Jr. He gets to play alongside George Pickens and with new quarterback Russell Wilson and or Justin Fields, depending on who is the starter long term there. But this is kind of an interesting pick for me. Obviously, I do like this from an opportunity standpoint, and we obviously have to trust the Pittsburgh Steelers when it comes to evaluating wide receiver talent they have one of the highest hit rates in the nfl at that wide receiver position so this is obviously good things for brian thomas jr but it's going to be interesting for me to think about how this is going to work from a schematic standpoint with george pickens and brian thomas jr neither of these guys really feel like savvy route runner type of possession receivers and i do think that that is what they have had over there in a guy like deontay johnson for a very long time they even had it in guys like Antonio Brown. And even before AB and Emmanuel Sanders, they've always had that type of wide receiver. They're not going to have that in Brian Thomas Jr. They don't have that in George Pickens. going to be interesting to see how this works itself out. But you still got to love the opportunity. Like I said, you love the landing spot. Brian Thomas Jr., he goes number 20 overall here to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now coming in at pick 23, 
Obviously, the Minnesota Vikings did not get to move up in the NFL draft. That was the New York Giants, so they still hold that 23 overall pick. And with that pick, they do select quarterback Bo Nix out of Oregon. And I gotta admit, guys, you guys know I am a Minnesota Vikings fan. I would absolutely hate this pick because I just have hopes that we get a different quarterback than Bo Nix. This is the selection, so let's talk about it. Bo Nix coming out of Oregon in 2023, he had 4,500 yards, 45 touchdowns, and three interceptions. This is a guy who's played college football for a long time it seems now obviously what he has the ability to do here in minnesota with the weapons that he's going to have justin jefferson tj hawkinson jordan addison it doesn't get much better than that now one of the strong points of bo nick's game is his accuracy and i think you put him in a system here with kevin o'connell that is the type of offensive coach that you want to have with a quarterback like bo Nix, a smart quarterback a guy who is probably going to make the right play but not necessarily have the talent to make the big play bo Nix, he would go here to minnesota i think he would be in late first round consideration in those super flex rookie drafts maybe that 110 to 112 range and i'm sorry if i sound a little bit negative but just thinking about the minnesota vikings drafting the qb5 in this class doesn't really get me excited sorry not sorry but that's what they do here at pick 23 so let's just move on to the next fantasy relevant player so at pick 24 in the nfl draft peter has the dallas cowboys selecting xavier worthy wide receiver out of texas and this is officially the fastest man in combine history we all have seen the 40 yard dash at this point but that's not why they drafted him. Let's talk about the production that he had there in Texas. 75 receptions for 1,000 yards and five touchdowns. His career in Texas was actually pretty solid. He is a true early breakout age. That is what you want to see out of wide receivers. But it seems like he took a little bit of a Robin role next to Adonai Mitchell this year when Adonai came in to play that true X type of wide receiver. But I don't think that this is necessarily a bad landing spot for Xavier Worthy. And although I have deemed him as a riskier pick, probably a pick that's a little bit overrated, this this is actually a very good landing spot for Xavier Worthy. He gets to play with Dak Prescott, obviously a very good quarterback at the NFL level. We saw what he was able to do for fantasy football purposes last year as far as the quarterback scoring goes and also how he was able to elevate CD Lamb into that number one overall wide receiver. And then you get to have Xavier Worthy play alongside a guy like CD Lamb. He can learn a little bit more about the NFL receiver game and he can also play Robin to CD Lamb's Batman. So this is a good landing spot. I think there's a lot of hope and a lot of upside with this type of landing spot. And I think Xavier Worthy still would be worthy of a late first round pick in consideration to those rookie drafts, especially if he is drafted here 24 by the Dallas Cowboys. Now coming in at pick 28, this is where the Buffalo Bills select wide receiver Adonai Mitchell out of Texas. And I'm not going to lie, this is going to instantly put Adonai Mitchell very high in a lot of people's rankings. You guys know myself, Nick, some of the guys on the BDGE channel that we make content with, we are all very high on Adonai. We have him in that wide receiver four to five type of range in our rookie drafts. You put him here in Buffalo to instantly fill that Stefan Diggs wide receiver one type of role. Obviously no Gabe Davis there either. Curtis Samuel is the new guy in the building, but Adonai Mitchell, the ceiling is sky high when you put him with a guy like Josh Allen. Obviously 2023, he put together 55 receptions for 845 yards and 11 touchdowns. We've seen it in the film. You see the flashes of talent in a guy like Adonai Mitchell. And in fact, we just talked about C.D. Lamb. You see shades of C.D. Lamb in Adonai Mitchell's game. He goes here to the Buffalo Bills. I promise you, some people are going to start considering Adonai in that 107, 108, 109 type of range. And I don't necessarily blame him. This is about as good of a landing spot, probably the best possible situation for a guy like A.D. Mitchell. And this is the type of landing spot that would get me way too excited about a guy like Adonai. But for good reasons, he goes to the Buffalo Bills here at pick 28. Now coming in at pick 31, one. This is where the San Francisco 49ers are going to select wide receiver Lad McConkey out of Georgia. And this is very interesting as well because we've talked about the Brandon Ayuk trade rumors. Are they potentially adding a guy like Lad McConkey in the first round because they're gearing up to trade Brandon Ayuk? I guess this is a possible situation. If you ask Peter Schrager, he says that this is a guy who is universally liked and respected across NFL circles. He says everybody loves the toughness, the smarts, the selflessness, everything that Lad McConkey has. He says, San Francisco is the perfect home. And when you look at what he was able to do at Georgia, if you were just looking at the box score, you would probably say, why is this guy going in the first round? 478 yards in 2023, two touchdowns. He dealt with some injuries. 
Obviously, the years before his best collegiate season being in 2022, he had 700 yards and seven touchdowns. I think there's a lot of meat left on the bone here in his college career. And that's something that is probably being a little bit overlooked in the Dynasty Fantasy football community. When you throw on a tape, it's hard to find many other players as exciting as Ladd McConkey is, especially when he has the ball in his hands after the catch. I think this is a very good fit. Now, if they don't move on from Brandon Ayuk, there could be some opportunity question marks for a short while here in San Francisco. But if they did move Brandon and Ayuk and this was the replacement, I think this is a guy who'd probably find his way into the first round as well in those Dynasty Fantasy Football rookie drafts. And now with the final pick in the first round, coming in at pick 32, Peter Schrager shocks the world because I have not seen this before. Jalen Polk is selected by the Kansas City Chiefs at 32 overall, and I get it. Sometimes you gotta do things to get the clicks, to get the people talking. That's what this feels like to me. And even though you could kind of paint it as there's some Rasheed Rice issues, or maybe there's a lot of buzz about Jalen Polk, which he says is a personal favorite of his. He says he's hearing a lot of people in the football world talk about how much they like Jalen Polk. I guess we'll see how much of that is true. But you look at what he did in Washington in 2023. Obviously, that Washington Huskies team was a very good football team. They competed for a national championship. Jalen Polk was a big part of that. 69 receptions for 1,159 yards and nine touchdowns. It is just really, really hard for me to imagine that Jalen Polk gets first round draft capital. This would put him over guys like Troy Franklin, over guys like Keon Coleman, who I think have higher ceilings than a guy like Jalen Polk. And yes, there could be a need for wide receiver in Kansas City. But it feels like if Kansas City was in the second round, they could get a guy like Jalen Polk in the second round at their last pick there. This just feels like a reach, and it's not me trying to knock Peter Schrager. I'm sure that there is some truth to what he's hearing, but this just feels outlandish. I don't agree with this type of draft capital, but if it happens, I'm sure Jalen Polk would be a very early second round pick in your fantasy football rookie drafts. I don't know if the talent of Jalen Polk deserves that type of draft capital, but hey, who knows? Crazy shit has happened. Jalen Polk goes 32nd overall to the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, that is all I have for you guys today. If you did enjoy the video go ahead and hit that like button it is the best free way to show this channel some support like i said we are so close to the nfl draft and i'm very excited speaking of the nfl draft if you guys want to hang out on stream with me and the bdge boys we will be streaming the first round of the nfl draft so come over to the bdge dynasty channel and join us i will make a community post about it here on my channel so you guys don't miss that as well and in the spirit of not missing things make sure you guys are subscribed to this channel that way you never miss any future uploads and also make sure you guys are joining the free discord we do have a free discord linked in the description that is where I take trades for trade review shows. We do rookie mock drafts and all that stuff. We're going to do like a rookie mock draft mayhem the day after the seventh round of the NFL draft concludes. So make sure you are in the Discord so that way when we do those rookie mock drafts, you can be a part of them. But with all of that being said, I will see you guys on the next video. But until then, peace out.